one of the biggest character climaxes has begun. From Shoujo to goddamn my baby's all grown up, Fern has uttered something to her master that to most would be the biggest Garo red flags ever. I might kill you, Freeland Sama. Freeland couldn't help but put a big smile on her face and tell her then, let's come up with a plan. Before we continue any further, guys, there will obviously be spoilers for Freeland Beyond Journeys in in season 1 of episode 25. Burns character development is the perfect example of one of the oldest tropes in storytelling, the passing of the torch. From master to student, student to master, the student to master, we are witnessing a long line of knowledge being passed down. However, in episode 25, they gave us a little bit of wrinkle in the storytelling as we go through a flashback between Freeland and Sari. The show's themes have have been about memories, more specifically the contrast between Hamo the hero's journey as part of the hero's party with Freeland, Hyther, and Aizen versus the forgotten hero in the crafty monk and the nameless priest that looked like Zion. Or Go TP. So it makes complete sense to now tie in one of the oldest and most important relationships in humanity. From master to student, like Siri taking in Flame as a student on a whim, Freeland has taken in Fern as a thanks to Hyther for saving her life. This marks the beginning of a very long journey from when Fern was yay high to now blocking Freeland's vision when she wants to take a nap. We've seen Fern hold her own against one of the most powerful demons in Freeland's time. We've seen Freeland nonchalantly allow both Stark and Fern to take on a liar. I mean Lugner and Lenny. What's the German word for her? What we got here and what has been hinted to us since the very beginning when she blew the boulder into another stratosphere is that Fern will be a strong mage one day. Clearly, what falls in the line with the archetype of these students like Fern and Stark is their self-consciousness about their own abilities. Fern is always measuring herself to literally the strongest mage alive and Stark was always comparing himself to one of the strongest warriors to ever live. So we kind of have this, I'm a lot stronger than I realized trope baked into these characters and so the audience already knows that their super saiyan moment will eventually come where they rise to the challenge and go beyond what they think they can go but we all know that they have bought the blast some fools the lugner and lenny fight in the aura of the guillotine arc tease exactly what fern is eventually turning into an elf she's a goddamn monster just kidding. An amazing mage that didn't have to live hundreds and hundreds of years to be very strong. This takes us to the Mage Academy arc where they have to pass the first class mage exam that will allow them to go through a path that is extremely dangerous without a first class mage certificate. The theme here is literally everything a school was symbolized as it acts as a hub and representation of how the importance of our history is passed on. I'm sure Hemo is somewhere in the history of books when his fake hero sword being the real hero sword while Kraft is nowhere to be found. While unfortunately for Kraft, he's probably nowhere in the history books. The very beginning of the arc, it is made clear that Fern is very much like Stark and that they doubt their abilities. This scene where Freeland purposely tries to take a nap literally acknowledges Fern's boobies. Our baby girl Fern is really all grown up. Man, this must be really weird when you have a daughter and she's hitting puberty and then becoming adult and then the kryptonite letting her date other dudes. But I'll take start. This doubt that Fern has is even further hinted because she just wouldn't let Freeland ditch her. This arc mimic a lot of what we've seen from her character already. I already caught the bird. That was pretty easy. You are severely underestimating me. I don't want to unnecessarily kill another person. This arc is an interesting one because Sari kind of acts as initially some kind of antagonist when she's introduced in this arc, but really she is. It's about the two schools of thought, one that desires power and creating this hierarchy of class and accumulation of power in the form of attaining magic, developing mages that have that talent. She acts as this gatekeeper for magic. Whereas Freeland and Dinkin see the beauty in the pursuit of magic, where it would be for the purity and joy of it. Flame, who had this dream that stemmed from something as simple as a spell that grew flowers, eventually achieved their goal by giving humanity access to that purity and joy, and by getting humanity to research and use magic themselves. Once again, these flowers 
universe is a big reoccurring symbol of this show. When you have something as beautiful as what magic can do for humanity, why would she not want to share it? And that takes us to the clashing dynamic with Siri, who wants to keep something special, special. And when you have something special, why would you want to share it with everyone? If that something special becomes common, you start to value it differently. In this case, I feel like most people would agree in this instance of Flame, of wanting to share something special with the world. But I'm sure there are some instances in other areas where gatekeeping could be a good thing. But in the context of Flame, this seems like this is an innovation for society. It's kind of like the internet, right? There's a ton of benefit, but we all know there's a dark web and one of the dark stuff that you can use on the web. Like Flame said, Freeland is a mage that belongs in the age of peace, whereas Flame can't envision a world where Ciri isn't constantly in conflict in an age of war. Ciri's vision that turns centuries later into the Continental Magic Association creates an environment for the lust for power, creating a snobby upper class that only shares knowledge amongst themselves, which creates this hierarchy, which creates this this gatekeeping society. So how does this tie into Fern? Siri explains even further the feeling that due to humanity's quick decision making and limited lifespan, they will be in 1000 years after the start of researching of magic, they will overtake the elves through their extreme fast paced advancement because they have shorter lifespans. Fern is a mage with immense talent that can help steer which direction humanity can go in regards to magic. Since says it herself that she is happy to have followed Fern and Freeland because she herself is a person that represents peace versus Ganal and Richter's idealism mirroring more like series. This is where Fern is represented as that character that not only is what Freeland is trying to pass the torch to in the coming of age literally having a double meaning in this context for humanity and Fern being that representation of that advancement of humanity. Freeland even says it herself in this episode that when Fern was learning Zoltrak that is all she knew at a very young age. At a very young age she already knew how to hide her mana. These are all things that Freeland had to accumulate and learn for centuries. So Fern is represented for the entire story's lesson of the entire arc. So the entire arc of Fern represents that Hemo the hero, that Craft the monk, and now that advancement in society through Ciri already predicting that humanity because of Flame giving this magic advancement to humans to advance farther and faster and quicker in order to defeat the demon king and grow flowers. Being a hero, being remembered, doing what's right, carrying on all the important values of the past, passing on all those teachings, experiences, and memories of her journey. Through series prediction, Fern represents humanity across multiple lifespans, encompassing Craft the Monk and Hemo the Hero's lesson. Remember what Craft gave to Freeland to give to Fern? He wanted to pass a significant item to represent that hope for the next generation, as he himself already saw something in her. Now we are primed for Fern's payoff as a character being violent and pushy. Just kidding. Or not. Fern's climactic moment as a character is the huge payoff from everything that she learned from Freeland for a sensei seeing their student succeed in every master's dream. Everything that we know about Fern has led to this very moment of having to kill Freeland. Her clone that is. This is what shonen journeys are all about. The climax. The payoff. There's no better feeling than your sensei telling you you're ready. So knowing what we know about Fern's natural development as a character of her being the student of Freeland and her showing signs that she's a lot more powerful, that is something in the storytelling that is very predictable. But what they did by introducing Siri, it gives the context of the whole span of going back a thousand years when Flame died. So this gives us that legacy feeling, the legacy that Craft the Monk wanted to leave behind, the legacy that Hemo the hero throughout the entire story is trying to tell us is to literally leave humanity's legacy by doing all these little things to be remembered, being inspirational, making these statues. All of this becomes that hub for what Fern represents and going back in time, doing those flashbacks of Freeland's journey. She is that connection 
from Sari and Flame to Freeland and now she gets to instill that into Fern. There's no other better way to make this moment even more epic. Like given the cliffhanger that we all wanted to see. When Freeland moves out of the way, Fern is right there to blast the shit out of her. So guys, this is what I really thought was really special about the storytelling is like a lot of things in shonen aspects, a lot of fantasy, things can be very predictable. And what the entire story did was build that layer and go more macro and macro. And by going more macro, you could go back in time and relate to the entire moment of making Fern's moment more epic, more like that Super Saiyan moment. It really is that coming of age and that coming of age means multiple things, not only for Fern, but humanity and society as a whole. And that's freaking amazing. That's what I loved about this moment. I did read the manga. I did read this arc already, but to feel and see this moment built up, it felt just as great. Yeah, guys, let me know what you guys thought about this episode, about this arc. It's a really exciting arc. A lot of big moments for Freeland too. Sorry, Stark, you can't be here. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I would love to know. So do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Check out my blog at otakusen.com. And I appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Shoo.